Okay. All right, thank you. Good morning to all of you. It is really a pleasure to give a talk in this hall. Uh, IICT has spent uh, 75 years younger than me. I'm 85. So I, I really uh, have noticed or observed how it has grown from strength to strength from the 40s and 50s to today where it has contributed to Indian industry and progress of the country in general. I want to congratulate all the directors and IICT as well as CSIR for this great contribution to the nation. I was asked, I, I offered many possible topics including a very general one on uh, how we can prosper in India through science in a big way or how science in India can reach greater heights, etc. But the director said talk about the periodic table because it is the year of the periodic table. Could you turn off some of those lights? Ah, that. The year of the periodic table. In fact, the student, they hardly talked about the periodic table. In fact, there was nothing called the periodic table in the curriculum. In fact, I, I don't remember that, at least in India. I had to learn it much later when I was doing my PhD, PA, periodic table being so important and so on. Because in my life it has played a very major role. I use it a lot on a day-to-day -day basis. So fortunately for us in chemistry, the United Nations decided to call this year the year of the periodic table. Well, this is the United Nations announcement in the international year. For those who wonder about elements, let me tell you, in ancient India, when you say ancient India, it is five to five, before 5,000 years. India used to make um, copper, bronze, and brass materials, vessels, for example. Started making much later I, tools of iron and weapons of iron. Of course, the major thing in 5th century, only old 5th century, much later, the iron pillar of Delhi came. And in the 6th century, the famous wood steel was made in India. Out of the Damascus Road, the famous Damascus Road came out. I hope you all know Damascus is supposed to be the best sword ever made for in warfare or whatever. And it is called Damascus. I don't know why it is called Damascus, not Indian sword, but I don't, don't ask me. I guess the sword were made in Damascus, but the steel was made in India. And of course, we know now it is a fantastic steel, because actually when you do electron microscope images of Damascus sword, what you find is there are a lot of carbon nanotubes in it. Because they, they were annealing the steel in flame coming from the fire, which always gave a lot of carbon in vapor form, which then crystallized as nanotubes inside the steel. It is amazing. And that was done in the 6th century. I will talk about that, but I am going to talk about other things in the periodic table and related matters. Well, in the first century, I'm talking about 2000 years ago, human only five elements. And so there was no need for a periodic table, really. And you can see this, is, this would have been the periodic table in 16th century. So it is only very few elements known, and I've given you all the elements, clearly known. And then you go further, but 18th century, you know, very recent, just 200 and odd years ago, we knew only 20 elements. And the, I hope you all know the history of chemistry. While Newton created physics in 17th century, around 1680, 1670, his physics was its origin to Newton as a subject. He is Newton who created physics. Similarly, chemistry got created in the 18th century, one century later, that was due to Lavoisier. Lavoisier in France. And before that, chemistry was not known as a subject. When Lavoisier was alive in the late 18th century, there are exactly these 20 elements. So chemistry actually started with 20 elements. And the con the, then the entire idea of periodicity came slowly. A number of people contributed. Early 19th century, Dobriner, Dobriner talked about tiers of elements. Uh, the, uh, Shankur Shah uh, in 1862 talked about spiral arrangement of elements. 
then the law of octaves in 1864 by Newland and by that time came a very important concept later useful in periodic table the idea of size atomic volume was mentioned in, by 1870 by Myers and then of course Mendeleev 1869 the periodic law and we are celebrating periodic law of Mendeleev today and then came Mosley I'll talk about Mosley later atomic number. well atomic number of course is a very very basic thing for periodic table and that is what we use even today in arranged elements and unfortunately even today it is taught wrongly in schools what is the what is the atomic number and ask them all my faculty professors in our institute including all our PhD students says oh number of electrons no no it is not number of electrons if number of electrons iron would have atomic number iron if it is iron 2 plus will be different electrons atomic number has to change so you should not teach them as number of electrons it is number of protons in the nucleus or number of electrons in a neutral atom so that is not taught properly that concept of atomic number came about 1914 you see we are to the 20th century so we had to wait actually the 20th century to make the periodic table possible and that is what happened through Mendeleev. Mendeleev of course uh, became famous for the periodic law earlier much before the atomic number was known. Well elements can be arranged in terms of mass number, atomic number, periodicity, all kinds of similarities of properties and people have tried to do that. And people have tried to show the Dobriner triads are the following for example he said you know, chlorine, bromine, iodine they form a triad. Lithium, sodium, potassium form a triad. This, this is what they call triads, elements with similar properties. All elements, unfortunately, cannot be arranged in triads. So it is not possible to be the basis of a periodic table. However, the triads do exist. There are similarities in properties of these elements. I'll come back to that. Mendeleev, whom we call the father of the modern periodic table, gave this in 1869. He was a great Russian chemist. He published his first version of the periodic table in 1869. Periods are rows and uh, groups are columns. So this, this is the periodic table of Mendeleev. Uh, this is the occasion our young people particularly should know about Mendeleev. I will say a few words about Mendeleev. Mendeleev came from a family in Siberia. Siberia, if anybody has gone even today in winter, it is a cold part of, I think, I have gone there many times. Uh, he was born in Siberia and he was one of 16 children. In those days, people were prolific. They had lots of children. <laughs> and, but uh, he, of course, one of the bad things and good things, people had children, but very few survived. It's true of India. I come from that time and very few people survived, very few children. And the tuberculosis was a big thing in Russia and all those places those days. And most of them died out of tuberculosis. And his father also died out of tuberculosis. So here was a young Mondeli with his mother. And his father used to run a glass factory, making glass. So he used to love glass blowing. Sort of a scientific background came around that probably. But anyway, his mother starts running the glass factory because her husband dies. She runs there, after a while there is a big fire in the glass factory, the entire factory burns down. What do we do? And then you know, her, his mother was very fond of Mendeleev. She thought of all the children, he was the brightest of the children she had. He must do something for him. So the, I must educate him to have a college degree. I must ed educate him to become a scientist and so on. And so she decided, well, everything is gone. How to educate him? And in Siberia at that time, there was no way to educate him. So she says, I must take him to Moscow where he will study. So it was 1,500 uh, kilometers, I get all, always confused. So he, she says, uh, I will go with my son to Mon Moscow. Hey, please go away. Hey, don't worry. Uh, what, what he, he goes, she puts all the belongings in a cart and takes his son and his sister, walks from all the way from Siberia to Moscow. They walk. How many of us walk? Of course, Sakracharya did, walked thousands of miles. 
in India. Of course, but this was an unbelievable story. But I, then, you know, going to Moscow, it was not the best place. Then, for, 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 uh, if you couldn't find the right, right, right facility, goes to St. Petersburg with her son. And of course, there he's supposed to study something. But in the meantime, what uh, luck would have it, because he loses his mother also. And then they find he had also tuberculosis. So they didn't know what to do. Fortunately for him, he could leave St. Petersburg, go somewhere else to a, uh, a port somewhere where uh, the weather was much better. He improves his health for a an year and comes back. And eventually studies there and gets a college degree and, and so on. But later, very soon after his studies, he started looking at the state of chemistry and said, you know, it is not very good. I should write books in chemistry. He wrote the earliest to write a book on organic chemistry, all kinds of little things of that kind he did. But of course, he did many other things as well. So Mendeleev's main contribution, periodic table started, he observed the similarities and the way to arrange elements, and 1869, therefore, marks a very big career. And what is interesting is, chemists decided, you know, as you know, 1869, there was no Nobel Prize. 1901 was the first Nobel Prize given. In 1906, the Nobel, in fact, you can go through the history in the Nobel Committee proceedings. 1906, they say, we must give a Nobel Prize to this man for this periodic table. And they decide almost, the committee, to give him the periodic table. Of course, those days, the French were very powerful. The French chemists come rushing. No, 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 you see, there's a French man who is about to die, and uh, uh, he has discovered fluorine. I think for fluorine, let us give the prize, Moisan. So Moisan got the 1906 Nobel Prize. Mendeleev didn't get it. Unfortunately, Mendeleev died later in 1906, so he couldn't get the Nobel Prize in 1907. So I advise to you, young fellows, if you want a Nobel Prize, live as long as you can. <laughs> okay. Second, Mendeleev got, uh, died in, uh, before he could ever get a Nobel Prize in 1906. But this is a short story of a great man. The reason he was a great man was not only because he wrote books and he did periodic tables, because he did so many things for Russia. He was a great nationalist. Uh, he, well, he used to do things like uh, making very nice suitcases. Uh, made all kinds of crazy things you can imagine. Oh, water purification. The number of things he did was unbelievable. He helped the country and even the Tsar, at that time there was, there was no democracy. Tsar ruled Russia. Tsar valued him very highly and Tsar uh, uh, respected him a lot. In fact, he was a, a unbelievable Russian, a great Russian patriot. And also more than that, he loved students. He did a lot of teaching to students. He loved telling farmers, helping farmers uh, to improve farming. A number of things he did. He was an all-round, full-fledged chemist doing service to mankind through his knowledge of science. So he was a, such a man. Unfortunately, we only know about the periodic table, but he was one of the few great chemists who did a lot of work for the society, a lot of work for students, and also did very good research. Well, this periods and rows were his creation. And then, of course, uh, what are the outstanding features of Mendeley's period table? You know that. He left those gaps wherever, in certain groups, arranged the elements in a particular tabular form according to the atomic mass, the mass number, but not atomic number, and the increasing order of mass, and did not place odd elements and so on, like COA, COA9, the main groups. And this, this is how we left the periodic table uh, in 1906. Uh, uh, and much later, of course, uh, 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 many things came true because he, he had made predictions. For example, so-called Yakabor aluminum and yttrium. Well, Yaka boron is scandium. It was discovered in 1879 in Scandinavia by Nielsen. And Yaka aluminum is gallium, discovered later in 1875 by Bois Bourdin in France. There was Mendeley's periodic table in one sentence, it was a student to remember, properties of elementary elements vary periodically with atomic mass. That is what he said. Of course, we don't use the word mass now, but periodic table of his time used atomic mass 
and period properties of elements vary with atomic mass. Very, very good uh, conclusion in the late 19th century. Mendeleev had no clue of the existence of noble gases. I wanted to know that. Noble gases didn't exist when you were there. And uh, number of, uh, number of uh, discoveries were made. I want this, in, for, not forget chemistry when we talk of periodic table. Helium in 1868. Since I know in Telangana, of course, in these Telangana people, I can't call them Andhras anymore. So, uh, in Andhra, okay. It's in Andhra Pradesh. English astronomer who photographed the solar eclipse. And he found the new lines due to helium. So, all, of him, all the Andhras, even Telanganas, okay, can feel proud that identification has something to do with this state. A slight connection with Andhra, so I can say I am also a little proud that uh, helium had uh, uh, something to do with India. And, and of course, later it was established in 1868. And then, of course, uh, uh, Pierre Jensen in France and uh, uh, Lockyer, a uh, number of people uh, uh, contributed to the idea of noble gases. The most important names are here in the bottom Lord Rayleigh, again proper discovery of the helium, number of noble gases like xenon, argon, etc. by Ramsey. Ramsey had a big connection with India. Of course, with me also, indirectly. Lord Ramsey, Sir Ramsey was a professor in University College London and he was also in the Royal Society, was a fellow of the Royal Society. And the uh, reason he is connected with India is, in India, Jamshed De Tata, advice of Swami Vivekananda said there should be a research institute in India and he called it Scientific University of India or Indian Institute of Science. For the present we call it Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore. That was to be created. Of course the government then the person who was I said no there is no need for a research institute for a natives in India for a colony like India. He said no. Ultimately it could go all the way up to the Privy Council and they asked the Royal Society, I'm very proud as a fellow of the Royal Society, that Royal Society took a very good decision. He said, look, let me let's form a committee in a typical British way. They asked Lord Ramsey, or Sir Ramsey, to be the chairman of that committee. Ramsey's committee said, it's very important for India to have a science research institute. And Indian Institute of Science was created because of that. Of course, there was a competition. They were, some people said it should be in Rurki, it's a, but fortunately, our Maharaja said, okay, I'll give you 535 acres of land, free, free electricity, free water, come here to Bangalore. And I think that's a good decision. And <laughs> so that, that was the Ramsey. And not only happy because Ramsey was a wonderful scientist. He got a Nobel Prize, by the way, for those who may not know, of the discovery of noble gases. Most of the work of his noble gases was done by his student, Travers. Uh, uh, you know, those you know, nowadays, if Travers worked today with a senior professor, he would have shared the Nobel Prize. Uh, those days, it was only the the junior guys. Travers, of course, what he did was, out of the creation of the Indian Institute of Science, he sent Travers as the first director of Indian Institute of Science. So, you see, Nobel gases has some connection with India in this way. Indian Institute of Science was created with the first director, Travers, the student of Ramsey, for the discoverer of noble gases. Okay, and this is Travers, as you can see, Ramsey and Travers, and so many others I will not talk about. Neon, the name Neon was given, it meant new. Xenon meant stranger, 1898. Krypton meant hidden, these are the names given. Of course, argon is no, lot of argons in India, lazy. <laughs> these are the names given, the noble gases. Now, so with, one, with noble gases, periodic table became different right away. And of course, in the meantime, we got to know about electronic structure, how to fill electrons, 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, oh, then 3d. After 4s, 3d, 4p, 4c. You see, after 4s, you don't go to 4p, but 3d, 4p, 5s. And then after 5s, you go to 4d, 5p. Well, you know, the, when this kind of filling explain the, the idea of transition elements. Uh, uh, 
uh, the idea that electron occupies the orbital with the lowest energy and so on. These concepts came and so on. So transition elements can got, got defined uh, because of this D coming before the, uh, the uh, P of the pre, uh, 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 like here in 3P and 4P and so on. Now, this, this uh, uh, created a uh, very, very possibility. For example, you arrange all the halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. All of them have number of electrons in halogens is one less than the noble gas. You see, helium is two, uh, 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 neon is 10, argon is 18 electron and so on. You see, for example, fluorine is one less than neon. Chlorine is one less than argon. One electron less than the next noble gas. The alkali metals, on the other hand, is one electron more. Helium is two, lithium is three, neon is 10, neon, sodium is 11, argon is 18, potassium is 19. So these are all play games that people could play only when I was young. When I was young, these kinds of games were played, how the electrons could be arranged. Until then, you see, we didn't know, because we didn't know the electronic structure, we didn't know the stability of electrons, orbitals, how to fill. In fact, I got my MSc without knowing how to fill electrons. There was no off bow principle taught in MSc class in India. It was not known. We now know off bow principle as if school children now that learn that. Okay, in spite of serious drawbacks, a modern version of the Pendelis periodic table was, that was used for several years with elements shown like that outside. Uh, but much better uh, uh, tables were made, uh, mainly because of Mosley, I told you, who gave the idea of atomic number. I don't forget the def definition of atomic number, number of protons in the nucleus, number of electrons in a neutral atom, okay? And that was known, and atomic number became the way to arrange a periodic table. And this is the way atomic number made it possible to arrange. This is one way in 1914. Well, the elements in a group are similar. This is the kind of periodic table that came a bit later. And this is a group in the uh, periods and very well arranged. This is the periodic table of the kind that came up when I was a student, roughly when I was a student. Then, of course, uh, many elements came because artificial elements came. Uh, particularly, my guru, Seaborg, in Berkeley, discovered a number of elements particularly plutonium. I hope you all know what plutonium is for. And number of elements, element 97, berkelium, 98, californium, 99, einsteinium, and, uh, and so on. There is 100, late, much later, other elements were discovered, like 106 uh, was seaborgium. And um, this is very interesting. When, when uh, seaborgium had to be named after seaborg, Seaborg was alive. There is a rule in the International Committee of IU, International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, no element can be named after a scientist who is alive. So it became a very difficult thing. I was the president of the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry at that time, 1985. Uh, and in fact, I had a great pleasure of insisting Seaborg's name must be there. And fortunately, the entire committee, including the International Union of Pure and Applied Physics, agreed with that and Seaborg's name got into 106. So we have all the artificial elements. Well, unfortunately, that should not be there, 118. You know, I want you to know the story. 118 was created by a new mechanism, taking one fast-moving xenon or something, bombarding something, and make this big compound nucleus. Then a guy called Nimonov, who discovered this, he showed this result to the director of the lab in Berkeley. And she was uh, uh, Darlene Hoffman. Many of you may not know her. Uh, she was the director. And she, he sourced that. And everything seemed OK. They immediately published the element 118 in physical review letters. And later, many people tried to repeat this in Russia, various places. They couldn't repeat it. And uh, she got very worried. She made everyone do everything that was possible, including Nimonov, was still there. And uh, it's going to be repeated. And Nimonov had cheated, actually. 
and he wouldn't admit it, but uh, it was proved that he is still around somewhere in California, but though that element was withdrawn. So the only time physical review later refuses to withdraw the paper in 118, he says, how can it be, you know, but then they have to show that actually the event, events that have been recorded were, were never actually found. Uh, it is some artificial something, some crazy thing that Nimonov had done. So uh, as a joke, those, those who want to read, last month's issue of Royal Society of Chemistry London has a wonderful article called Nimononium. Uh, joke, it's a joke of 118 which now doesn't exist. Somebody has to make it yet, I think. I don't know whether somebody has made it as I'm talking, but it was not known till last year. So under, maybe uh, we should not have under 18. But anyway, uh, it was very important to finish that line, you see. It's under 18, but uh, I don't know. That is not there. But all these wonderful uh, periodic table that we have now is in this form. form. Well, you know, I want to put this, I, I want to, Arrange the periodic table in the form of solids, liquids, and gases. Yellow is a solid. You see this periodic table, all the elements, everything is a solid. How about liquids? One liquid. Oh, no, no, two, two liquids. Bromine and mercury, only two liquids of all elements. What about gas? Yeah, all the noble gases. Uh, fluorine, nitrogen, oxygen. Few gases. Fewer liquids. Mainly solids. I think, as a joke, students, God wanted the world to be solid. All solids. That is why I work in solid state chemistry. So that's <laughs> what about metals and non metals? You see, yellows are metal, this blue, whatever, pink is non metal. Everything is a metal. Very few non metals. Hydrogen, of course. And are the carbon, nitrogen, etc., etc., bismuth. Some of the uh, these are non-metals. Otherwise, most elements are. Metals. And you know what is interesting? If you take silicon, it is an. Uh, or you can see silicon. Uh, uh, and what is what? Oh yeah, here germanium. Here. Germanium, silicon, and uh, also selenium, uh, tellurium, uh, selenium is here, tellurium. In liquid state, they are metals. In solid state, they are not metals. So even that, you see, goes away, the number of metals goes down. So the, la, this is a very nice thing to know. Lot of periodic properties. I will not take a lesson today because there is not a classroom. Lot of trends in, for example, Ionization energy decreases as you go down or, in, uh, or uh, uh, <coughs> increases as you go up or decreases as you go down. Uh, electronegativity increases as you go to the right. A whole bunch of things we know. In fact, to the extent that Linus Pauling made a very simple rule in electronegativity. If you go down in the first say all the way, fluorine is 4, everything is 0 0.5. Fluorine is 4, oxygen is 3.5, the nitrogen is 3, carbon is 2.5. You know, everything became straightforward in a simple periodic table of this kind, where atomic number decided everything, therefore periodic properties like electronegativity, ionization energy uh, were also, uh, also occurred. So the chronology of the modern periodic table is, starts from De Brenner, uh, Triads, Shankartois, Spirals, Newlands, Law of Actives, I didn't talk about them because of the shortage of time, Mayers, showed atomic volume as important, but we didn't use it much. Mendeley, of course, the periodic law, and then mostly atomic number. The long form of the periodic table actually came out in 1985, very recent. Well, hardly, hardly 30 years, as you can see. Present day periodic table, 1994. Most of you were alive at that time. Were born, anyway. Children, I'm talking about the children. Uh, 1994, very, very recent. The present date, 1984, you see the IUPAC recognized, we recognize a particular periodic table and the Association of the World Science Teachers, particularly in US, uh, slightly changed it and made a periodic table what it is today. This is the uh, Association of Science Education, 1985. The slight change, uh, 
we, we have the periodic table of today. In closing, and this part, I'm sorry. Modern periodic table is a product of contribution of many chemists of many countries. It has taken many centuries of work of chemists to arrive at this arrangement. The modern periodic table is an encyclopedia of properties of all known elements. It also provides to, uh, uh, space to accommodate elements to be discovered. By using the various features of the modern periodic table, we can unravel properties of elements and also predict their chemical behavior. Intelligent use, that is very important, intelligent. Intelligent use of the periodic table continues to give rise to new discovery. Many, many, even today, pe many people like me, we use it as if, uh, uh, you know, uh, in a Bible uh, or a Gita in your hand. Periodic table has uh, made a very big difference. And the discovery you can, I just showed the number of elements discovered by a very different element, countries. United Kingdom discovered 24 elements. United States, 21 elements, Sweden, 20, Germany, 19, France, 19, 17, Russia, 9, and so on and so forth. Some ancient elements called it ancient discovery. It is nothing to do with like copper, for example. Nobody discovered in the modern times. Well, in the, what has happened in the periodic table in the last one year? Well, it is such a fantastic table, as I told you. In fact, there was a very nice symposium three, four years ago in Sweden, arranged by the Nobel Committee on Chemistry. In fact, I was one of the speakers. At that time, I said, the most brilliant or the most important table human beings ever made, one table, if you forget, that will be the periodic table. No other table made by humans was, is as important, as brilliant, as useful as the periodic table. That's what I said. Everybody, so many of them cite that. I think it is the most powerful table. Well, oh, what has happened is the Angavanta Chemia, you hope you all know it, the very one of the important journals of chemistry, uh, they decided to invite a few chemists this year, uh, this year I mean 2019, to ask each of them to write anything they want on element. My element is it called. And I was one of them, I called my element. I, 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 I didn't want to pick any other thing. I picked oxygen. Not because oxygen is, uh, uh, you breathe oxygen, of course, that's very important. Uh, the oxygen is in water, that's also true. Of course, oxygen is also in carbon dioxide, so it's not because of that. Oxygen, mainly because oxygen forms oxides, and you see, not only because of it, the O2 and H2O for life, as you know, life per se, if somebody asks what is the origin of life, with what is the most essential compound for life, it is water. Everything else comes later. I hope you don't forget, forget that. And then, lots of many things. Ferroelectric, superconductors, multiferroics, all kinds of metals. There are innumerable oxides of innumerable structure and innumerable properties still being discovered. No other element has that, you know, who variety of properties and variety of structures as oxides. So I wrote on oxides. And it came out in the, just in the January issue of the journal. Uh, there, and I'll tell you, uh, I'll tell you how I, in my own research, how I, well, struggling, you know, I was always struggling how to make, this is a real life, how to make research, do research in India, which others will read and everybody will see my work. But that has been an area which can't be, it can't be uh, some, anything else others are doing. My, it should be my own. So that's how I decided chemistry of materials, colleagues. That subject didn't exist when I started, say, in 19, late 50s or early 60s. But I'll give you an example of how periodic table I used. In 1967, suddenly it occurred to me, you know, I must discover a whole family of materials, do something. Well, I said, okay, I then found there was a paper on lanthanum cobalt oxide, written by Professor John Goodenough in MIT. I, I said, okay, that looks very interesting. Very interesting magnetism, very interesting electrical properties. Why don't I work on that? I started to work on that. I said, said soon I decided, instead of CO, why CO? I'll put another metal. Why not? I not put lanthanum titanate. I'm sorry, this is vanadium. I don't know why lanthanum. Titanium, vanadium, chromium, manganese, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, all of them of lanthanum I can make. That's what I started doing. So there are so many of them. Then, why lanthanum? 
ಕೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಸಭೆ ಏನೋ ಲೈಫ್ ಲೈನ್ ಅಂತ ನಾನು ಪ್ರೆಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ನೀಡಿ ಸಭೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಗಿಡೋರಿಗೆ ಹೋಗಿರು ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಇಟ್ಟಿ ಫೋರ್ಟೀನ್ ಮಲ್ಟಿಪ್ಲೈ ಬೈ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಅದು ಏಯ್ಟಿ ನ್ಯೂ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದೆಮ್ ಆರ್ ಫ್ಯಾಂಟಾಸ್ಟಿಕ್ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ಸ್ ಐ ದಟ್ ಹೌ ಐ ಗಾಟ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಕಾಂಟ್ರಿಬ್ಯೂಟಿಂಗ್ ದ ವೆರಿ ಬಿಗ್ ವೇ ಟು ಒನ್ ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ ನೇಮ್ ದಿ ಆಕ್ಸೈಡ್ ಪೆರೋಸ್ಕೈಟ್ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ಟೀಸ್ ಇನ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರ್ಸ್ ಪೆರೋಸ್ಕೈಟ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಗಾಂಧ್ ಗುಡ್ ಎನ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ವರ್ಕಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಚ್ ಪ್ರೊಸರ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ವರ್ಕಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಪೆರೋಸ್ಕೈಟ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಅಟ್ ದಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಐ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ಹೌ ಐ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಮೀ ಟು ಗೆಟ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ಕನ್ಕ್ಲೂಷನ್ ಒರಿಂಗ್ ವರ್ಕಿಂಗ್ ಅನ್ ಹೋಲ್ ಬಂಚ್ ಆಫ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಟ್ ಎಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ದನ್ ಹೋಲ್ ಬಂಚ್ ಆಫ್ ರೀರ್ಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಮೇಕ್ ಎ ಪೀರಿಯಾ ಇನ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ಫ್ರೋಟ್ ಎ ಫೇಮಸ್ ಆರ್ಟಿಕಲ್ ರೈಟಿಂಗ್ ದ ಪೀರಿಯಾಡಿಕ್ ಟೇಬಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಫೆರೋಸ್ ಕೈಟ್ಸ್ ಹೌ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ಟೀಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸೊ ಆನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ಟಾಕ್ ಮೋರ್ ದನ್ ದಟ್ ವೆಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಅ ಪೀರಿಯಾಡಿಕ್ ಟೇಬಲ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ನೌ ಕಮ್ ಯುರೋಪಿಯನ್ ಕೆಮಿಕಲ್ ಸೊಸೈಟಿ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸ್ಟೂಪಿಡ್ ಲುಕಿಂಗ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಮೈ ಹಿ ಹಸ್ ಗಾನ್ ಮ್ಯಾಡ್ ಆರ್ ಹೆಡ್ ಎಡ್ ಟು ಮೆನಿ ಡ್ರಿಂಕ್ಸ್ ವೈ ಡಿಡ್ ಯು ರೈಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ವೆಲ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಸೀರಿಯಸ್ ಥ್ರೆಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಟು ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ದೋಸ್ ಎಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಗೋ ಅವೇ ವಾಟ್ ಆರ್ ದೋಸ್ ಎಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಶಿಯಂ ಇಟ್ರಿಯಂ ಕ್ರೋಮಿ ಜಿಂಕ್ ಗರ್ಮೇನಿಯಂ ಆರ್ಸನಿಕ್ ದೇ ಆಲ್ ಬಿ ಎಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ಕಲರ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಏರಿಯಾ ಶೋನ್ ಡಿಪೆಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಲ್ಯಾಪ್ ಟು ದೆಮ್ ಇನ್ ಫರ್ ಲಿವ್ ಫರ್ ಫರ್ ಅಸ್ ಥ್ರೆಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ರೀಸಿಂಗ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಯುರೇನಿಯಂ ಡಿಸ್ಪ್ರೋಸಿಯಂ ಕ್ರೋಮಿಯಂ ಓಕೆ ಎಲ್ಲೋ ಲಿಮಿಟೆಡ್ ಅವೈಲೇಬಿಲಿಟಿ ವೆರಿ ಲಿಟ್ಲ್ ಮೇಡಿದ್ರು ಯು ಸಿ ಸೋಬರಿ ಮೆಗ್ನೀಷಿಯಂ ಜರ್ಕೋನಿಯಂ ನಮ್ಮ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಲಿಥಿಯಂ ಯು ಸಿ ಎವ್ರಿ ಬಾಡಿ ಲಿಥಿಯಂ ಬ್ಯಾಟ್ರಿ ವೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಯುವರ್ ಲಿಥಿಯಂ ಬ್ಯಾಟ್ರಿ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಡೆಡ್ ಅಗೇನ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ಪಾಲಿಟಿಷಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಇನ್ ಯು ಕೆ ದ ಪ್ರೈಮ್ ಮಿನಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಅನೌನ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಪಾರ್ಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ನೋ ಇಟ್ ನೋ ಇಟ್ ನೋ ಇಸ್ ದಟ್ ದಟ್ ಐ ರೆಡ್ ದಟ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಯು ಮೇಡ್ ಮೇ ಮೇ ಥೆರೆಸ ಮೇ ಇಟ್ ಸೇಸ್ ಬ್ರಿಟನ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಸೆವೆಂಟಿ ಫೈವ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ ಇನ್ ಟೆನ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಒಂದು ಯೂ ಲಿಥಿಯಂ ಕೌ ಕೋಬಾಲ್ಟ್ ಬ್ಯಾಟ್ರಿ ವೆರಿ ಲಿಥಿಯಂ ಇಸ್ ನೋ ಲಿಥಿಯಂ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಕೋಬಾಲ್ಟ್ ಯು ನೋ ದಿ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಕೋಬಾಲ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅವೈಲೇಬಲ್ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಕಾಂಗೋ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವೈ ಚೈನಾ ಇಸ್ ಟೇಕನ್ ಓವರ್ ಕಾಂಗೋ ವಿ ಶುಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಆಲ್ಟ್ ಟೇಕನ್ ಓವರ್ ಐ ಮೀನ್ ಯು ನೋ ದಿ ಚೈನೀಸ್ ವೆರಿ ದೇರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಅನ್ಸ್ಕ್ರೂಪುಲಸ್ ಮರ್ಸಿಲಸ್ unbelievable foresight half of africa is controlled by them today china because of this kind of consideration we should do that actually really i've always been saying that india should uh, have the, our own minds for cobalt our own minds for something else and the reason this period is very interesting is then of course plentiful supply potassium sodium you can have that is why we need a sodium battery you see not lithium battery lot of our going on in sodium battery including in our own institute in bangalore many others are working in india also i hope soon we'll have sodium battery and also magnesium battery is useful but but there is a limited available of magnesium so i would give more importance to our sodium battery for future of energy well uh some are conflict minerals i'll not bother about them uh, uh some of the elements i have shown which are used in the smartphones cobalt tantalum uh, gold and so on and i keep asking them like i don't want to go on i'll take take 15 minutes more i can describe all the the meaning of these pictures uh, uh, and you can see the, the red blob here that is helium helium is in serious threat there is
there are any Bengalis, they will probably, they will always be saying, you know, the, uh, there is a little helium in Calcutta. <laughs> there is a little some fountain coming water. And of course, that is enough for uh, one laboratory per year. But we need a lot of helium. So this is going to be a serious problem of helium. I just want to say a few words about how science is not just Mendeleev. Mendeleev, when he did his science, there were no great chemists. There were no gain chemistry, in fact. Chemistry as a subject was not there. You know, you must think of history when we teach. You must think of history when we do chemistry. Because, you know, we think, oh, periodic table. What, you know, poor man, that periodic table, when he did, there was no electron. There was no atom. Nothing was known. You see, atom was discovered in 1896. Right? So just barely we knew something about atom and nothing about the electron. The electron was discovered in 1876 by J.J. Thompson. How could these people think of these things? This is the way I always look at science as, a, as something to learn. Lavoisier, he was the father of chemistry. He is the one who defined what chemistry was. He was the first one who said loss of chemical combination. He was the one who said water is not an element. It is oxygen which is the element. Water was considered the element till 1794. And in the late 18th century, said, oxygen is the element. He was a discoverer of oxygen. Loss of chemical combination. He was the one who showed air is oxygen and nitrogen. One fifth is oxygen. Unbelievable. He did it for those interested in history, which I am. Because I'm a great, very proud to be an Indian. Our Indian history, 1794, was very important. Uh, that, that is where the, the third battle of Mysore against the British was in 1794. And I'll not say more than that. <laughs> See, Dalton discovered the atom. When he discovered the atom again, only chemists, you know, this is why chemistry students tell you, can be very proud. At atom is the idea of physicists, not of a physicist. Physicists didn't even agree with the atoms. They were, they were against atoms for many decades. They said nothing called atom. It's chemists who said, no, atom is the fundamental constituent of all matter. Atom is the smallest particle that is required to make molecules and materials. That was, that was 1906. Of course, we celebrated anniversary of He was again a school teacher who gave the idea of the atom, modern atom. The old atom, of course, India had a, Canada had given an idea of an old atom, many uh, Greeks had given, but the idea given by Dalton was more inclusive, uh, all, all, these, all these things that we knew. Of course, the greatest scientist of all time. Again, what you don't realize, what we don't realize, we inherit the greatness of a subject because of the greatness of the people who practiced it before us. We ride over the shoulders of these great men, particularly Michael Faraday. Again, Michael Faraday, you can see, 1791-1867. No atom was there. No electron was there. Not, not atom, no electron was there. Electron came in much, much later. You see, in the end of 19th century, 1876, 96, and this man did not just in lots of electrolysis. He's the one who did Faraday effect. Faraday rotation. He is the one who also did uh, uh, discovered electric. He discovered benzene. Benzene is a compound. The number of things he did is unbelievable. So Lord Rutherford said, if only Faraday were alive in 20th century, you would have got at least five Nobel Prizes. But I have counted my way of counting in modern times. Four he would have got, definitely. Three to four Nobel Prizes if he were in 20th century. And that he did all in 19th century. And you know, he 364 days in a year, you can find in his book. The books are all kept in Royal Institution. Those of you go to London, if possible, see it. He wrote beautiful handwriting every day what he did. Beautiful handwriting. Only one day in a year it won't be there. That is Christmas Day, 25 December. Otherwise, every day he would have worked in the lab. Worked very, very hard. In fact, it is unbelievable, that this man. And you know, he is the one who gave the idea of lines of force. The lines of force, the magnetism, electricity, 
commonality between these different forces, the, the unification idea. He's the first one who gathered. All this he did with only three years of schooling. Only three years of schooling, his father died, he had to leave school. He had a, all that he could do because he had a chance to listen to lectures by uh, Sir Humphrey Davy when he was a little boy. He got inspired by him and somehow he got a job as a laboratory attender. Actually his name, his title was bottle washer in his lab and from there he rose to be a great scientist. What about greatness of Faraday is Maxwell when he wrote electromagnetic theory and you know the idea of unification in his book everyone should read that introduction preface. I am not, I am only writing equations. The real master, real guru is that Faraday. That is what Maxwell said. Einstein later who really became famous for unification of forces. He says look I am only writing it. The guru is that Faraday. All the three years of schooling. So there must be many in our country with like that who should be able to do something with imagination. And that is Faraday. You know, he had many important things to say. For example, he, uh, he would uh, never take more than one hour to a lecture. He lectured the students, a lot of children's lectures, one hour exactly. He said nobody had the right to bore an audience for more than one hour. And I will sure, I'll finish, I won't take one hour. <laughs> and that's why I tell students, anybody give a special class with two class, hours after one hour, they it. Don't, don't attend any lecture after one hour. You cannot observe more than one hour. That is definite. Psychologists know that, others know that. He also did many things. I wish all of our scientists listened to that. The Queen, Queen Victoria wrote to him, Dear Mr. Faraday, you are such a great scientist, loved by people, loved by scientists. I would like to give you a knighthood. Of course, he had, then he would have become Sir Michael Faraday. And uh, my Faraday writes back, Dear Queen, you have been always been gracious and kind. I'm an ordinary man, Faraday. Everyone calls me Mike. Let me be like that. I don't want your knighthood. Didn't take knighthood. <laughs> How very amazing. More importantly, you know, I've been a very proud fellow of the Royal Society because it's a great academy. It's one of the greatest science academies of the world even today. At that time, it was very powerful in science. The, the Royal Society wrote to him, we would like you to be the president of the Royal Society. He writes back, thank you so much for this great honor, probably the greatest honor a man can get in life. But you know, my place is in the lab, I want to be hanging around the lab. I don't want to be the president. I think our scientists, I think our CSR DJ should know, they travel much too much, walk around all over, everywhere they are there, except in the lab. <laughs> I think we should be in the lab. We should be you see, Faraday wrote 451 research papers single-handedly without DST grant, no CSR grant, no postdoc, no PhD students, just one man sitting writing. And that is my hero. If I have heroes, he will be one of my greatest heroes. I think that is what we want to be in India. India should be Faraday's, full of Faraday's. We have millions of children, some of them should become Faraday's. I hope I'm waiting. I'll be too old. I won't be alive. I hope it will happen. I show Kekule in chemistry because everyone remembers because of his dream, you know, benzene and so, so, the snake and all that. No, no, no. That is the most important. That is later. First thing is, you know, how did he think of that carbon as a valence of four? You tell me. You sit in a vacuum at that time. 1829 to 1896, 19th century, and thought of pollen, carbon as a valence of four. And he is the one who gave the idea of a structure in chemistry. He was the first structural chemist, particularly structural organic chemist. Then, of course, benzene, structure of benzene. Fantastic. I think, as T.N. Lewis was asked, define science. What is science about? Because many people ask, even our politicians, what is science? He says, Science is so beautiful, I won't define it. Science, if we, does not include the beauty of the ideas of, Carole, of Kekulé, the creativity of Faraday, and the originality of Lavoisier. It is not science. That is the science I'm talking about, this man says. I think Kekulé belongs to that family of great chemists. 
and this is the greatest chemist of 20th century, G. N. Lewis. He did more research in chemistry, more discovery than any other chemist, including Linus Pauling. I would consider him number one, and then comes Linus Pauling in 20th century. Of course, I went as a postdoc to University of Carolina, Berkeley. Uh, I don't know the, the, I forget dates, 1957, I think. Uh, by that time he had died. Lewis, you know, he is the one, what did he do? The idea of a chemical bond. There was no bond before bond, Lewis, chemical bond, 1916. Actually, he had written that paper in 1904 and taken this paper to the head of the department, professor, and he read it, he just threw it, actually, literally threw it, and so by rubbish. He didn't know what to do, young Lewis. So he waited until he had an assistant professorship and all, a job in MIT much later, then published that. So it got delayed by about 10 years. Otherwise, chemical bond would have been discovered in 1904. The 1896 is electron. Eight years later, he thought electrons must have something to do with bond. Lewis thought. Well, Lewis did many things. Lewis has said Lewis basis. When the chemical bond was proposed as a Nobel Prize, you, I, I, it is unbelievable. Uh, the Nobel Committee has said in there, it is not clear that chemical bond will be considered important by chemists. <laughs> that is what they wrote. Didn't give Nobel Prize. When he said Lewis has said Lewis basis, I don't think that concept will be accepted by the Nobel Committee. Said. He was nominated 25 times or 30 times. Each time they didn't give Nobel Prize. The main reason was he had corrected the mistakes of many great chemists in Europe, particularly in Sweden and Germany. Like Lorentz's third heat theorem. Heat theorem is equal to F equal to H, or G equal to H, three energy is equal to enthalpy. That is the equation, Lorentz's heat theorem. He said, no, what about entropy? He wrote F is equal to uh, G is equal to H minus T, yes. You see, that S has to be zero, then only G can be zero. So people never excused him. How can you, how can this stupid American correct all our great? So they never excused him. So they didn't give, he's the first one to introduce thermodynamics in chemistry. Then chemical bond, valence bond, Lewis acid, Lewis basis. Then deuterium was discovered by you. Uh, what is his name? Uh, he one of his students. Uh, as you grow old, what happens is, I tell you, this is a joke, I always tell my students who are getting old. Old means about 50, 45. Uh, half my age. They keep forgetting all the time. So that, it was after 60, you are entitled to forget. And the joke in America is after 60, you forget two things. One is where you left your glasses and where you left your keys. And the second thing he says, I don't remember what it is. <laughs> okay. Yuri, his student, got here in Columbia, discovered deuterium. And immediately said, hey, Harold, what is this stupid deuterium? What do you do with the element? You have to make a compound. He made D2O in Berkeley. And wrote 23 papers in Journal of American Chemistry. Sorry, Lewis. 23 papers. Spectroscopy of D2O, effect of putting D2O in proteins, effect on biological system, effect on life. He had a few guinea pigs on his table. He would feed them D2O and found they died after some time. <laughs> no, a number of papers. Unbelievable, man. And then you see, uh, they said when the Nobel Prize was given, only Yuri got, and they said, Louis didn't get. 24, Louis, no Nobel Prize. Uh, let me come to the end of Louis. Of course, then he was the one who, uh, Seaborg got his PhD under him. Like Glenn always, Glenn Seaborg I used to be very close to him, always used to show his PhD thesis on Louis acids and Louis basis. And he's the one who said, do a kind of artificial elements, plutonium. So the tremendous, he didn't put his name on that. Gibson, Seaborg, they all came out of Lewis. Calvin, photosynthesis, they were USC students. For, and the idea of phosphorescence, it was his idea. Idea of a triplet state, idea of Lewis. So he didn't get a Nobel Prize. But you know, in the end, the last student of his, a very close friend of mine who just died, Michael Kasha, very great spectroscopist for those who are spectroscopists. Michael was an electronic spectroscopist. Michael, he told Michael, I want you to record the spectrum of this compound in a liquid of high directory constant. He said, what is that liquid? He said, liquid hydrocyanic acid, he said. HCN, I am not going to make liquid HCN and my God, it is poisonous, I won't do it. And Louis said, no, 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 it's okay, I will make it for you, you can just measure. So you go and have lunch, by the time you come back, I will have liquid HCN. Sure enough, when he comes back after lunch, 
on the vacuum line there was a bulb of a liquid HCN and the entire lab was thinking of bitter almonds for those who don't know liquid HCN smells of a bit don't try eh? uh, <laughs> it's bad liquid uh, anyway and there was Louis sitting in a chair he was dead and the story is Louis did he commit suicide or did he just die because of HCN. I have asked everybody, you know, in Berkeley, my own guru, Kenneth Pitzer, Hildebrand, and I was a postdoc, and long, long ago, I'm talking about 1950s, he would say, Ram, he was such a brilliant man, he would make suicide look like a natural death. That is what they answered. That is what, if you see a Cathedral of Science, a beautiful book, somebody quotes what I am saying in that. It is an unbelievable story the greatest genius of chemistry. When you talk of periodic table at all, we must remember people like Lewis. Of course, then there is the other great man, Linus Pauling, I don't have to talk about him. Everyone knows him. But of all the human beings I know, of all the scientists, no one more courageous than this man. His courage was unbelievable. He, he would oppose the entire world if he believed in it. Something like that. Well, you know, of course, he did the chemical bond. He got Nobel Prize for chemical bond. 1954, Lewis had died. And of course, he wrote The Nature of the Chemical Bond, the great book dedicated to Lewis. Let me tell you my personal story. It is because I read that book when I was 17 years old in India, I decided to become a chemist. That book had a tremendous effect in my life. Even today, I, I, I still had a copy with his signature. And later, I did Orchids of Molecular Structure, I even saw some molecules he was interested in. Uh, in this third edition of Nature of the Chemical Bond, he cited them. Uh, somebody stole my book with his signature, I don't know where it is. But Linus was a great man, number of things he did. Of course, uh, uh, sickle cell anemia, you know that protein structure. Structure of the alpha helix. And if many of you would have read Crick, the great uh, biologist, uh, biophysicist, whatever you call him. He says in his book, I would consider Linus Pauling as the father of modern molecular biology. The discovery of alpha helix by a chemist like Pauling more or less started molecular biology. He was one of the earliest to do that. He was a tremendous genius. And, uh, you know, he was treated very badly because he was against nuclear testing. But now everybody believes now. When he was doing it, it was considered the out of fashion. How can you say don't test? No, Americans wouldn't like it. They had to test everything. Even today we're having effect all those American tests, as you, I hope you know that lots of people are finding radioactivity and all around, even now in that, those islands. Anyway, it was like that. Uh, <laughs> one personal story. 1964, I had to go to America as a young man, as a young professor in Kanpur, and uh, I was 30 years old, in fact. Uh, I, 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 in Washington, there was a meeting, and then I was walking in the evening in front of the White House. I saw Linus Pauling with a placard, no nuclear testing. With a, <laughs> I went to the line, Professor Pauling, what, is, what are you doing? No, you know, the nuclear testing, I, know, I just want to oppose, tell the president what I think of it. You know, he had a, it was very emotional. And the interesting thing is, the story is after 6 o'clock or 6.30, there was a dinner that President Kennedy gave to all the Nobel laureates of America. So he threw away the play card, put on another coat, and went in the gate, White House. <laughs> and then, you know, I'm joking, the, the story goes that he danced with Jackie Kennedy also that day. <laughs> he was like that. And much later, you see, when everything was gone, he was accepted by America. You know, they had been, he had been kicked out of American chemicals at his membership. Can you imagine? He was not a member of the SES. And then they, in 1976, they allowed him to come back because Glenn Seaborg became the president of American Chemical Society. That year I got a medal of the American Chemical Society. I went to receive it in New York. <coughs> we had a lunch and whatever. I saw Linus falling. I asked him, you must be a very happy man. You are at last back in the professional society line in the American Chemical Society. <coughs> it must have hurt you a lot when they removed you from the American Chemical Society. Oh, no. What hurt me more, he said, when I got a second Nobel Prize, my department gave me, gave me even a cup of tea. 
That hurt me more. And actually he left the department. He resigned from Caltech at that time. Well, Indian should know. India, it's very common. Uh, they don't recognize colleagues. Anyway, there is Linus, greatest chemist of 20th century, after, of course, after G. and Lewis. Oh. I've given my story of periodic table at the end, of course, I had to talk about scientists, mainly because nothing is in vacuum. Science is a continuum, just like knowledge is continuum. Of course, knowledge of India is coming from thousands of years, still is going, that stream is going. And chemistry, of course, is a very, very important of this knowledge force. And of course, while people like Mandalay gave the periodic table, many equally great or even greater chemists have done so much other things. So we have to view the entire thing in, in the sort of way, uh, view the entire thing in a, uh, I'm sorry, don't please disturb me like that. Uh, view the entire thing as part of a, uh, the, uh, of the whole. Uh, uh, you, you should not take things in isolation, one discovery, just electron, just periodic table, just. It's all linked one to another. It's a long story, it's a wonderful story. And I'm very glad I've had a, this opportunity to tell you this story. And uh, thank you so much.